Last week, we looked at the basics of making debit and credit entries into our tier accounts. And we know that for every item, every account has its own tier account. So every asset, every liability, every bit of revenue or expense, plus capital, they all have their own individual tier accounts that we record our accounting entries in. We remember that for every debit there has to be an equal credit. And we covered that last week and we now know how to make our debit and credit entries into our T account. So this week we've got to go to the next step, which is closing off the accounts or balancing the accounts at the end of the accounting period. It could be a month, it could be a financial year. And the key here is what we're trying to do is work out what our financial position actually is. Have we made a profit or a loss? What are our assets and liabilities? So that's why we close off the accounts at the end of the accounting period. So we can basically see where we stand. Now, we have asset accounts, liability accounts, revenue, expenses, and capital. I haven't got capital up here. It's sort of a slightly complicated thing. I'm going to look at that in the next video when I talk about the trial balance. So we're going to start by looking to say, how do we balance off an asset account? And the asset account I've got here up on my board is cash at bank. So cash is an asset. And I've made some transactions over the month and I've recorded the relevant entries. I've got some cash coming in on the debit side of my cash at bank account. And I've got some cash going out, some payments I've made on the credit side of my bank account. Now what I've got to do at the end of the month is balance off this account. Now the first step that you need to do is let's add up all the debit entries and see what we've got. Well, we've got 11,000 in total on the debit side. We then need to add up all the credits and see how much we've got. Well, we've only got 3,300 on the credit side. So to make it balance, to make both sides equal, we have to put a balance in entry in here on the credit side. And we call that the balance carried forward. So at the end of the month, I'm going to put in a balance carried forward, I've abbreviated to down CF, of 7,700. And that means I've now got 11,000 on my credit side and 11,000 on my debit side. So we have to think about what this balance carried forward, balance carried forward of 7,700 pounds actually represents. Well, what it means is we had 11,000 pounds coming in and we only spent 3,300. So we've still got 7,700 pounds in the bank and we're carrying that balance forward from the end of January to the start of February. This represents a debit balance, although we have to write an entry on the credit side. And that's because the debits were more than the credits. So we're going to start February with £7,700 in the bank, an entry that we need to put on the debit side. So we bring forward this balance over on the debit side on the 1st of February. We call it the balance brought forward, £7,700. And that's our cash at bank account balanced off at the end of January with a balance brought forward for the 1st of February, the start of the next accounting period. So that's an asset account. Now liability accounts, I've got one here, trade payables. Now a liability account is balanced off in a similar way, but liability accounts normally have credit balances. They normally have more credits than they do debits. In this account, I've obviously bought some inventory or stock, which was worth 2,500 pounds. And I obviously bought that on credit, but I also paid off some of the suppliers that I owed, I made a payment here, which is on the debit side. 
So let's see how I can balance that off then at the end of January. Well, I've got 2,500 is my total on the credit side. But on the debit side, I've only got 2,000. So I need to put a balancing figure over here on the debit side. So I've put a balancing figure in, balance carried forward of 500. And now my debits and credits are equal. What's this 500 represent? Well, it actually represents money we still owe to the suppliers at the end of the month. We had more credits in January than we had debits. So it represents a credit balance, credits being greater than debits. So in the start of January, I'm going to bring it down. Balance brought forward, 500 pounds. That's what we owed at the end of January, and it's what we still owe at the start of the next month, the 1st of February. So that deals with our assets and liabilities, and you'll see I've written BS. BS, that stands for balance sheet. Those are our balance sheet accounts. Now we have to deal with revenue and expenses, and I've written IS, and IS, because these are accounts which are going to end up in our income statement, or statement of profit or loss. Now, the sales account, this is our revenue account, it's money that we get from selling our stock or inventory, and we've made some sales. When we make sales, we always have a credit in the sales account. The sales account always ends up with lots more credits than it does debits. So we've got £6,000 of sales on the credit side and we've got nothing on the debit side but we've got to make these two sides equal. So we know we need to put an entry on the debit side of this account so it can balance to £6,000. But with sales and expenses, our revenue and our expense accounts, we don't have balances carried forward and balances brought forward, we close off in a different way. We actually effectively transfer the balance off to the profit and loss account. So at the end of the month, we just move the balance to the profit and loss account, we put an entry in, and it says, this balance on sales is going to whiz off and end up in our profit and loss account or income statement. And that's how we close off those accounts. You'll see there's no balances being brought forward or carried forward. Eventually, we work out what our profit is for the period, and then we eventually transfer that profit to our capital account. But that's the last thing we do. I'm going to come back to that in the next video. Now with an expense account like wages or purchases or rent, rate, lights and heat, we tend to have debit balances. We incur lots of expenses, those are debit entries, so we find them with our expense accounts, we've got more debits and usually no credits. So again, we're going to balance this one off in the same way we did sales, but it's on the other side. This one's going to go off to the profit and loss account or income statement as well. So I've got total debits of 300. So I'm going to put an entry over here at the end of the month. That closes that account out. Both sides are equal. Balance has gone off to the profit and loss account. And that account is closed out. So that's the different ways in which we close out our T accounts and when we balance them all off we can then extract the trial balance, the test of whether we've entered a debit for every credit. Um, but more about that in the next video. Thank you for watching, see you soon.